Hello, today we'll be covering how to display the score, change the score, and keep track of the score while an event like the enemy dying occurs. When a bat is killed by the player, we earn 100 points, while when a frog is killed, we earn 250 points. In our play scene, we show the current high score and the current wave. In our lobby, we display the previous rounds along with the overall high score made by our player. So let's learn everything about keeping track of score in Godot 4. This is part 8 of the tutorial series where we'll be creating this exact hack and slash game step by step in Godot. If you have any questions regarding errors, understanding, or anything at all, then please let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you. Remember that this course is completely free, but if you want to help support me a little bit more, then a link to my Patreon page will be in the description below. Your support truly means the world. Thanks, and remember to subscribe and drop a like to help YouTube push this tutorial and this entire series to more aspiring game developers. And now, let's begin. Okay, so first I want to kind of cover the logic for our game. What is the base logic? What's going to be happening in the background? Well, we're going to get started here in our global script. So we can go up here to our script, and we can go to global.gd, and we're going to create some new variables down here. We're going to say var high score is going to be our first one so this is going to be our overall high score at the start it can be equal to zero or just off base we can have it equal to zero here or we can equal it to uh an int if we want and we can set it but we'll say zero and we can say okay well current score is going to be equal to an int because we have no idea what this is going to be off the start of our game zero clue what we want that to be and then we can say okay well previous score is going to be whatever is from the previous round currently we it's going to be zero, but we have no idea what we want it to be because we want to set it through logic within our game. Okay, and now we're going to need a way to actually change the current score variable from our enemies whenever something like the bat or the frog is dead. And we want to charge a different amount of uh, points for each enemy. So in our bat script, we want to go to where the part where the bat is Q free, where he disappears from the scene. So that in this specific script is going to be right here, right? So if we're on the floor and we are dead, then we're going to await three seconds and then we're going to queue free ourselves. So we want to give the points. We can either sit here and we can give the points before our timer. So it gives the points the moment it dies or we can do it right before the moment it basically disappears. We'll do it right here. So it's just slightly above the await timer. And then we can say, or I guess we would do it under, right? So I guess we'd wait for this wait timer to go completely off. And then we'd say, okay, well, global.current score is going to plus equal whatever our points are for the kill right so we have to set up this variable but we can say points for kill just like this then we can create this variable up here at the top of our script and we can say okay well var var points for kill is going to be equal to for our bat 100 and then we can actually create this same variable so we don't forget over here in our frog script and over here, we're going to want it to be equal to 250, right? And then we also want to add in where do we want to change our points for kill in our frog script. Well, we're going to end up doing this down here in the animation just because it's going to be easier because this is where we kind of call our death animation. And we're, we, we actually do it down here in this handle death. But if we look at our death animation, this is where we play that same timer basically in the bat. But we play it just so we have one minute so we or one second so we can finish the animation completely then we're going to call our handle death function here and then down here is where we self queue free and we can right here just say well right before we self queue free we want to say okay well global dot current score is going to plus equal our points for kill so it's going to equal whatever current score is plus the points for our kill right and then we're going to need some logic to basically update our scores and our high scores and our previous score and everything like that whenever our game does end up finishing so we can go over to our stage level where basically the entire game is going to take place, right? Because this is where all the playing happens is in the stage level. So we need to check at the very end, well, okay, well, what's the current score? What's the high score? And we're going to end up doing that right here. Basically, whenever our uh, scene has finished, right? So over here, we can go to, I mean, our process function down here. And this is going to be our process function and we want to call a variable right before we change the scene right so we can say okay well we want to update all these different variables all our global we want to update the high score we want to update the previous score and everything like that so to do that we're going to have this await timer right here our fade in which is just going to be for our animation and then we can call this wherever in here we'll call it right after our animation here and we can say well okay update score right so we'll update all our score variables by just calling this function here then we can create this function and within this function it's going to be actually pretty simple right so basically whenever we 
switch scenes, what do we want to happen? The game's over. We want our previous score. So, right, our previous score is going to be equal to what right now, right? So, right now it is our current score, but we want our previous score to equal whatever our current score is currently because we have not changed our current score to back to zero yet, right? Then we can say, well, okay, if we can say, okay, well, if our global dot current score is greater than the high score, then we're going to want to set the current score to the high score as well. So if not, then we want it to stay the same. But if global dot current score is greater than our global dot high score, then we're going to say, okay, well, global dot high score is going to equal to our global dot current score, right? And then down here, we can just say, okay, well, now let's reset our game. Let's reset our score to equal to zero because everything has finished and our current score is now equal to absolutely nothing, right? Because the game has ended. Now we want to move into how we actually are going to display this within our game, right? So, okay, how, how are we going to want to display this? And I guess instead of putting it down here, we can really put it anywhere within the script. It doesn't, it truly doesn't matter where we put it within the script, but we'll just leave it there and everything should work. But now we have to have some way to display it, right? So we're gonna have static bodies and then we're gonna have rich text labels and they're going to end up explaining these numbers constantly within those scenes. So we'll start off here in the stage level since that's where we're at and we'll create a static body. We'll add in a static body. This static body is going to be renamed to our score labels, just like this. And then under our score labels, we're going to want rich text labels and then these rich text labels, we can add in some basic text over here and we can say, well, okay, well, this is going to be our current score level. So we can say current score. You can't really see it because that thing is hovering over it, but we're just going to do current score 999 because that's the max number that we can have. And then we're going to see how big this is. And we can say, okay, that looks good. And then if you want to size this up and down, you can end up changing the scale of our score label here. But we're also going to want to rename this to be our current score label. And then we are going to want one more. So we can go to our score label, add in a rich text label. This rich text label is going to be renamed to our current wave level, our label, just like this, which doesn't really have anything to do with score. It's just going to be for our game here. Our game that we are creating and we're going to say okay well current wave equals nine 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 just like so expand this as long as possible and we can just put it right here and play our game and see how this stuff is going to look together I like to put these these colons right next to each other so the numbers line up perfect and then if we click play let's see how that looks maybe it's too big it's not really too big it's a little too high so I guess we can grab these and move them down just a tad bit maybe down here to where they're in the dirt we can click play and you can see that we have current score and our current wave and we have the number that is not currently updating but it is there right okay now to create the script here this is going to be very very simple we can add in a score label script to this or actually we're not going to do that we're going to end up adding in a separate script for the both of these right so we can say okay well this is going to be a lot of scripts. Yeah, yes, it is. We can make it more modular, but it's going to be a lot easier just to go about it this way as we're going to have different variables for different sections of it. But we can always, you know, call a function and then call a different script that's going to pass that function through. But that's going to be a lot more complicated than what we're going to have here since these are all going to be individually updating labels and it's not a set, right? Because they all they all update something completely different. One updates the current score, one updates waves, one updates the high score, which isn't really going to update much. It's just if it changes and stuff like that. So we can say, okay, well, this is going to be our current score label. So in our script, what do we want to happen? Well, we want to, first of all, we can kind of remove all of this. We're going to keep the process since we're going to end up using that. But the rest of this we can remove for now. Up here, we're going to create a variable. This variable is going to be our default text. So our default text is going to be basically whatever text that we want there. So for example, over here in our text, we see current score colon space, then our number. That's what our default text is going to be. So it's going to be current, basically current score like that. Just what, what do we want to display right before the number? And then in our process function, we can say, okay, well, var text is going to equal a string of our default text. And then it's going to equal a string of our 
global score, right? And it's going to basically add those together. So it's going to equal our default text, and then we're going to equal a string of our global dot current score just like that and then we can say okay well we can say self dot text which is going to update this text right here which is going to update what it displays self dot text is going to be equal to whatever the text is equal to right our text variable here and that looks good now that is a very very simple script of course but we're going to end up playing and you're going to see what happens it's going to show zero right if we kill these enemies we should technically so far have a updating score let's see what happens if we kill one kill a couple maybe let's see what happens okay see you're gonna see okay they're gonna update and that should be 400 because we killed four bats once that one disappears and that is a 400 score and you can kind of see how that updates now for the waves the waves is going to be the exact same thing we're going to create a new script for our waves and we're actually going to go back into this script and we can copy exactly what we have here. Go back to our wave script, paste this all. Instead of it being the current score here, we're going to have this equal to the current wave. And then down here, instead of this equaling the current score, this is going to equal the current wave. And then it's all going to work the same just like that. If we click play, it's not going to update the wave actually, or maybe it will. It will update the wave. Okay, so I guess, yeah, okay, it will update the wave and that's because we're setting the wave currently I, I forgot that this current this current wave right there is actually a variable that we created in the previous episode or in one of the previous episodes and that's constantly updating because we're also using this variable to decide well, what wave is it how, how many enemies do we spawn what do we do so this this uh, variable is active in our game so every everything already updates with that and that's gonna work perfectly good right so that looks good now in our lobby level we're gonna go basically do the exact same thing static body i'll move this through this one a little bit quicker quicker because it's going to be the exact same process score labels and then we have a rich text label this rich text label is going to be for our high score label just like that 2d high score and we can end up typing in some text over here high score nine 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 just like that expand it move it over here into the air we're not going to make this one look too pretty but then we can say okay well rich text label again which one do we want this one to be this is going to be our previous round label and then what do we want the text to say here well we want it to say previous round nine 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 just like so and then we can create some scripts for these guys make sure we line them up right right let's line them up perfectly like they should be just like that they're not going to line up exact but that looks fine and then we can end up adding in a high score script we're going to end up using basically the same script that we had except here we're going to say high high score just like that and then instead of this being the current score this is going to be the high score and then our previous round, we can create a script for this as well. It's going to be, again, basically the same thing. Instead of current score, it's going to be previous round, just like so. And we can use the previous score, just like that. Now, if we go and click play in our lobby scene, you're going to see that everything should come together well. Previous score, high score, everything looks like zero, like it should be. And then we're gonna jump in. We have our current wave and we have our current score. Let's attack these enemies. Let's kill all four of them. Then we should be at a 400 score. And then let's kill some frogs and make sure everything's working correctly. And let's see if our wave ends up going up, which it should. Let's see, so it's going to remove. And now we're on wave two, 400 enemies. Let's at least kill one of these frogs and we can die on purpose to make sure the high score and everything is working okay so our player ended up dying which isn't good because we don't have any way to track our players health but you can see previous round and high score is 400 we jump in let's end up dying here on purpose just so we can or we'll kill one bat so we have some sort of score okay one bat's killed all right we have a 100 score let's let our 
player die on purpose now. And you're going to see, okay, well, previous round is 100, high score is 400, and it's going to basically update like that forever and ever and ever. And the frog is going to end up giving us 250, and the bats are going to give us 100 points. So we have different points for different bats and different enemies, just like that. And then that's how you kind of, that's a simple introduction to updating scores. And I hope it was able to help you in some way. If you are following all along with this series, and I'm hoping that everything is going smoothly and you're learning a lot about how to go about creating your own game here in Godot. I want to thank you so much for watching. And until next time, stay safe and have a wonderful rest of your day. Next time, we're going to be working on our health bar, which is going to be an amazing tutorial as where it's going to be super modular. And we're going to create one scene, which is going to be a progress bar. And we're going to customize it, have a script. And then we're going to pull variables from our bat enemy, our frog, and our player. And we're going to use the exact same health bar on all the enemies. And to implement it into a new enemy is going to take a max of just instancing the scene, right? So that's going to be next episode, and it's going to be very, very entertaining, and it's going to be very, very informationable. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you did learn something. I hope you did enjoy. If you have any questions, then please let me know in the comments. And until next time, stay safe. Bye-bye.